students, welcome to Edupedia World Computer Applications 9th grade video lecture series. I'm Upeka Vendibona and today we are talking about operating systems. What is an operating system? That is the first thing we need to know. You should be able to give the definition of operating systems. We define operating system is a system that controls and organizes the general operation of the computer hardware. So, it is a software that manages the underlying hardware to make use of the whole machine. So, keep in mind this definition. The next important question, why we need an operating system? Can't we use a machine without a noise? The answer is no. I mean, as ordinary people, we can't. Because we cannot speak to pile of silicon chips, metals and plastics in a language that we can understand. If you want to communicate, you have to speak to them in their language. The machine language. It's a matter of voltages, zeros and ones. As ninth graders, we don't need to go into that much of low level because we have something simple and easy to use operating systems. It provides a mean of communication between the user and the computer. So, always is the communicator who know the machine language and send our human instruction to the hardware. So now, Let's get into now few of popular operating systems. Microsoft Windows is an operating system that has been popular since 80s. Starting from the Windows 1.0, now they have come up to the Windows 10. Windows 95, 98 and XP was widely been used at the Intel Pentium days. You can ask from your previous generation how was the experience using them. As now we are in the Intel Core days, Core i3, i5, i7, etc., you may have still using Vista, Windows 7, or moved into Windows 8 or Windows 10. There is an interesting story why Microsoft has come up with this term, Windows, for the operating system, rather than using the term Gates. Just Google and find out why they call it Windows. That's your first assignment. Microsoft Windows is a proprietary operating system. That means you have to buy the license, which is very much expensive. There might be free or low-cost pirated copies available, but I advise you not to use pirated software. Because when Microsoft identified that you are not using a genuine software copy, they can sue you. If you cannot afford expensive proprietary operating systems, there is a solution. You can use free operating systems distributed under GNU GPL license. There is no cost. Best example is Ubuntu. It's an operating system based on Linux. You can freely download from their website. And not only Ubuntu, there are many freely available operating systems based on Linux. Your second assignment is found out few of other free operating systems. And it is not only your personal computer that needs an operating system. Even your mobile phone needs an operating system. Android is a widely being used mobile operating system because it is free. There are several releases on Android operating system and it's funny how they name their releases. Until today, they have released Cupcake, Donut, Eclair, Frozen Yogurt, Gingerbread, Honeycomb, Ice Cream Sandwich, Jelly Bean, Kit Kat, Lollipop and Marshmallow. Isn't it sweet and tasty? Anyway, apart from Android OS, iPhones use iOS, Windows phones use Windows OS. OS X is another proprietary operating system 
and it is developed by Apple Link. It bundled with their Mac computers, so this operating system is closely related to their hardware, not like others. So now, let's see what is the relationship between operating systems and application softwares. The operating system that a computer has determines what application software will run on it. That means the applications that are supported by the operating system can only be installed. So, always read the requirements section of the software to find out which operating system is supported by the application. Most of the time, software vendors provide different versions for each operating system platforms. So, why is that? Let's understand this by using an illustration. As you see, the bottom layer is hardware layer. We install operating system on top of the hardware where the user can directly interact with the operating system. And then we are installing application software on top of the operating system, not on top of the hardware layer. So we need an operating system to install applications. And remember, OS is the one who deals with hardware. And that's why applications are designed for a specific operating system. And we need to install that specific one according to our operating system. So, with this way, application software can communicate with the computer hardware through operating system. Good. Now we know a little bit about operating systems. Let's dig into more deep level. Basic functions of an operating system. Number one, functionality. It deals with input and output. Do you know what are the ways we input information to the machine? Let me tell you. We input keystrokes through keyboards, cursor movements using mouse, pixel information using scanners, and there are many ways we can input information through various input devices. And how about output? The output to the screen, output to the printer, all of that stuff handled by the operating systems. And the next one, Operating systems manage the system resources. When you install an application software, the program resides on the hard drive. When you need to run the program, each instruction needs to be loaded into memory. So this allocation and deallocation of memory space handled by the operating system. Not only the memory space, all the system resources managed by the operating system to deliver a better performance. For example, processing time and also the way you handle the backing store, your hard disk drive, it depends on your operating system. Another important functionality is the implementation of the system security. Operating systems play a major role in security and access rights. Through the operating system we can define which programs can be accessed by which people, which data can be accessed by which people. Likewise, we can prevent unauthorized access to the system. So, these are the basic functionalities. If you go into much deeper level regarding operating systems, you may find out much more than these functionalities. So, now, I want to discuss about the concept of multi-programming operating systems. There are two types. The first one is multitasking. The second one is multi-user. So nowadays, all of the operating systems support these two types. But at the time where the command line softwares were used, multitasking was a dream. Multitasking allows two or more programs to run at the same time. For example, now I'm running multiple programs at the same time. Microsoft PowerPoint, a recording software, and many more softwares I'm running at the same time. But in the earlier days, you have to close one program to start another. 
thanks to the multitasking oysters, now we don't need to do that. So now the multi-user. This concept used in two ways. In the first way, it lets many users at different terminals to share processing time on a powerful central computer. For example, in Windows, it supports simultaneous access by multiple users via remote desktop connection. So in this way, multiple users can access the same computer at the same time. In the second way, it disconnects the user from a local session but keeping his processors running and while another user can log into the system. So multitasking and multi-user features are most wanted features in operating systems nowadays. Another important thing is most of the operating systems comes with utility programs. So these utility programs support the machine to enhance its performance. For example, in Windows operating system, it comes a utility to defragment the disk drive. By that, it makes the faster access for data. And there might be backup utilities, utilities to check faults in the disk drives and repair them. And there might be utilities to format data drives. So you may not need any third-party software to perform these activities. So that's all in theoretical side. In the next lecture, we can do some practical work. We will look at some features of Windows operating system. So thank you for listening. See you in the next episode. This video brought to you by edupediaworld.com. Watch more from our website.